me track the diamond and everything. And as soon as I get out the truck, you know, that's the part where you see everything on the video. And I, I end up passing out. You know, I pass out. And, you know, they say I was just some kind of, I don't know what, what they call it, but I passed out. I lost a lot of blood. You and everything was unconscious. My truck had. Yeah, so I pass out. And that day, you know, I'm at the hospital. You know, I'm at the hospital every day. The cop came there, asked me what happened. I told him what happened and stuff like that. I said, he called me the N-word, this and this and that. He want me to move, but I wasn't moving. So I, so I said, so what happened to the guy? Did you lock the guy up? He said, well, it's under investigation. I said, what do you mean it's under investigation? I said, did you lock the guy up or not? So he said, it's still under investigation. So I said, well, where's the guy at now? He said, oh, we let him go. So I said, wait a minute. What do you mean you let him go? I said, you didn't lock him up or nothing? So now they don't want to answer my question because, you know, they're at the police station. So he said, well, you had to call my supervisor. So I called the supervisor at the state because I'm going for surgery in the morning. So they had to have an emergency surgery mm -hmm. because, you know, my, my, my nerves and stuff, if they don't get to it right the there, is damaged. then, then the, the nerve could be pulled all the way back in my arm. And they would have to cut my whole arm open. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they, they would have to cut my, my whole arm open to pull the, the nerve back up so they could attach it to my finger. So I called Ohio uh, the Sheriff's Department or whatever. And he told me it was an investigation. So I said, now, nah. I told him, if, it was, if this was the other way around, I would have been in jail. Yeah, and you, you know it. Yeah, you. you we went back and forth with the police department and stuff like that. He said, "No, no, I said yes, you, 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 you would have been charged. You would have been charged with assault." Yes, yes. You know. Yeah. So this guy supposed to be from um, what state he was from? Minnesota, I think he was from Minnesota mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, my my daughter did a. I mean, my lawyer did a little homework, and my daughter did a little stuff. You know, you know, we got we got a couple homes and stuff like that. So, you know, then find out he took everything out of his name now after this incident. Yeah, he was he was preparing he was preparing himself for a uh, for the civil suit. That's what he was doing. Right. So, you know, only thing I'm you know, and everybody you know the police department they still won't give me no information, no nothing. Now this is uh. Nothing. Now, 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 Dennis, man, that was that was last year. Uh, yeah. Is is it still is it still ongoing? Was you able to get any any additional information? Do you know if he still worked for the company? Did the company reached out to you and and try to make some type of restitution to you or anything like that? No, uh, Hogan never reached out to me. Target never reached out to me, but uh, a couple of people that worked at Target, they they reached out to me. You know, they were just employees. They wasn't a big, you know, they were big will, but they wasn't a big will. Mm -hmm. But Pilot did reach out to me, but Hogan never reached out to me because uh, people that I had workers, the advocate that was working on, they said, yeah, we already thought about it. They been getting calls like crazy all day long. And stuff, you know, because you, you have some supporters to call the company, down, yeah, to, to, to let them know that right. one of their drivers did something wrong. Mm -hmm. So they say he ain't working there, but I know somebody else who worked there. They say he's still working there, which is okay. You know, which it's okay. I'm praying that he's still working there because. You know that makes the company liable. Well, the company is still well, liable. What? I mean, regardless if he don't work there or not. I mean, the company. I mean, he was a company driver at the time. So true that. You know they. You know they're going to look at it at the at, at the time. So he, he, if he's not, if he wasn't, you know, if he stopped working there for whatever reason, 
the company, you know, mm-hmm. is is still liable for for him. So, you know. Right. And, you know, speaking of which, uh, you know, for, you know, for a year later, uh, is is it still ongoing right now? It's still ongoing. It's okay. still ongoing. And you and 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 so you 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 can't talk you you can't talk as much as as the ongoing process right now, right? Right. Okay, right. that's understandable. Right. Absolutely right. That's that's understandable. I do I I do appreciate you, you know, coming on and uh you know and and following up with me you know seeing that you was all you know making sure you're all right uh you're back in the truck now so you know and yes. then then your story from you know from your come up man is is awesome beautiful um and, you know when you went to the when you was in the hospital uh what 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 did the doctor say that was you know when he swiped your hand he must have swiped it pretty deep yeah, well, I can't move three three of my fingers, so that's you know I've been going therapy ever since this happened, and uh, I had to get two surgeries. So they figured the second one go fix it. It, it, it. It's it's still the same way. So you know, I don't have pain, but I have the the, the numbness in my hand, and my hand still swells up. Oh, uh, you know, every sit there, I got a swollen hand. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in other words, I had to massage my hand in mm-hmm. order to get fillers in my in my hand, my fingers and stuff. I had mm-hmm. to massage it for at least about six to seven hours mm-hmm. in order to, to get a filling in my, my fingers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, my fingers can't touch no, no type of metal because it feels like I have an electric shock in my fingers. When I touch metal, I can't eat with a metal fork. Everything I have to eat with is this plastic. I can't touch nothing metal because it feels like a metal. It feels like like a shot. You know how you put right. your face when you were a kid. You put your finger in a in a in a light bulb socket. Right, right. You know I, I'm that? familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, so that's how my fingers feel when I touch metal. Mm. So. Anytime my finger touch metal, it's like an electric shock. And everybody can't, the doctor can't understand it. Why my finger touch it, you know, feel like an electric shock. When I go to therapy, they try to train me, try to get my fingers used to the metal. But my fingers, you know, it just feel like an electric shock. Dennis, man, what was you know? that? What throughout your years of trucking, we we talking about three decades, man. I mean, throughout mm-hmm. your years of trucking, was that the only was was that the was that the only major incident that that you was faced with? Yes, mm-hmm. that's the you know, you know because you know I'm a type of guy. <laughs> You know, I'm an old school truck driver. If I see somebody broke on the side of the road, see, if this is what my wife don't. My wife loves me for who I am, but she's looking at the fact that I'm going to get hurt because I stop to help people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it, she doesn't have to be a trucker to understand, you know, because it could be Tim below out there. You want to check on that driver that's on the side of the road to see if he got a blanket. You know, that's what I do. I say, yo, you need any help? You need blankets? I know, you know, you, it's cold out here. You ain't got nothing, you know. You got nowhere. I would sit there and help the driver, another driver. But now today, I'm I'm kind of lyric. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You feel that. You, you feel I'm, that once you get out the truck, you might not get back in it. And it all, go. and it and, all, and it almost happened to you, man. Wow. Right, and and you know one thing I don't do now, I don't even go, I don't even go and trust them. Mm. You know, I was about to ask I don't you. Even go. I, I was about to ask you that. Like, what was after the incident? Did it have have it deterred you from from doing anything? Yeah, yeah. I don't go to trust them. I don't be around a whole bunch of people. 
And, you know, I don't like people around my space now, you know, mm. which is which is kind of bad, you know. You know, whenever I see uh, altercation and whatever, I, I kind of walk away. I kind of, it's more like I'm more afraid now than I was before. Because the way I used to be, I was this big, strong person that I could take on the world. You know, it kind of messed my mind up a little bit and stuff like that. But, you know, I just, I just a little lyric about certain people, mm. you know. I try not, you know, I do that conversation with people and stuff like that, you know. I, I kind of, I, I kind of don't do it no more. I just stay in my truck. I fill my truck at a certain spot. And like in New Jersey, I fill my truck up. I don't have to get fuel no more. You know, I could, I could go from New Jersey to Kentucky and back on the same take of fuel. You know, I don't have to get out of my truck. I feel more safe in my own state. You know, New Jersey and Pennsylvania, where well, I live in Pennsylvania, but I was raised in New Jersey, you know. And I feel more safer there than I do when I come to Ohio and Indiana. Because I, I see it. I see it all the time. You know, I see crazy truck driving out here, want to run you off the road and stuff. You know, you drive too slow or whatever. You drive too fast, you know. You know, it's a little crazy, you know, because they, they have a different breed of truck drivers out here now. You know that, right? Yes, sir. Sure do. They have a different breed. Different breed. Of, yeah, exactly. You, know, you, you see them all. And you know where you can find them at? You can find them right on that dumbass app called TikTok. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, you can find you, know, you can find them right over there. Oh yeah, you, you can find okay. them right over there doing dumbass doing dumbass TikTok shit. The, o, over there on that yeah. app, man. I, I tell you, the okay. diff, different breed of truck drivers right over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And back in the day. Truck driver usually don't stay in the middle lane like that, like how they do now. Mm-hmm. They stay in that middle lane. They could be driving so slow and stuff like that. And they won't move over. If nothing's on the right-hand side, they would not move over. They would stay there. You had to you had to pass them on the right-hand side in order to get in. But you kind of know that's against the law to do that if you mm-hmm. pass somebody on the right-hand side. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know that. But you got to do what you got to do sometimes, you know, because, you know, it's, 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 it's a different breed of truck drivers out here. Dennis, man, you know, let me let me ask you this because you know I I got a I, I got a guy you know thirty you know about three decades deep, uh, trucking in his blood. Do you think that you know? Do you think the industry changed or the people changed? The people industry didn't change. It's the people to me is the people change the industry. It might have a little part of it, but more of it is the people. You know? There we because go. back in the day when my father was driving, and back in 1978, when they shut down, you couldn't drive your truck. You hear what I'm saying? Run that by me again? When they, what, what now? What now? Back in 1978, you could not drive your truck. If is is in state of New Jersey, when they had shut down, you could not drive your truck. Either mm. you're gonna get shot or you're gonna get a brick through your truck. That's what happened in New Jersey. Mm. Because me, me and my father went out there to get in the truck. All the truck drivers on the highway on Route. No matter, I don't know. You ever heard of Route 29? You ever heard of 29? Mm. You heard of Shot Right? No, no, I haven't heard Over of that. that hit, hit me to it. Yeah. Was 29 in Elizabeth, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And back in the day, they went on strike because the fuel price went up. The fuel price went up to 80 cents a gallon. Mm-hmm. 80 cents a gallon. When, when I was out there with my father, fuel was like 45 cents a gallon when he was driving. So fuel went up to 80 cents or 90 cents a gallon. They went on strike. Mm. The truck. And when they went on strike and blocked the whole highway, 
guess what? They got what they wanted. The fuel price went right back down. The, the, the rates went up and, and stuff like that. And they shut it down. They, they were in 19... You could Google it. In, 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 in the state of New Jersey. They got what they wanted. And just the way it should, it should be now. But you got people out here that do, don't really stick together with the trucking. Because when they shut down, you, everybody should shut down. We can get what we want. We can get it. Because this happened back then. Because they only shut down for 10 hours. And in 10 hours, it, it kind of messed up the whole industry. In 10 hours. Mm. But you say now. Ain't that something? But you, but you say now they, you, you, we can't get that now. We nah, nah, nah. nah. Uh, because mm-hmm. you have a different breed of truck driver. Different breed. You know, you got mm-hmm. people just want to be a stunner well holder. They just in it for the money. You know, they ain't in it for the love of trucking. Mm-hmm. You know, this is this is my career. So once you start trucking, you, you know, you put the make it to a positive career. You know, it ain't all about the money. It's all about the, 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 the lovely of a truck driver being a truck driver. Because back in the day, man, if you was a truck driver, you were like God. You know what I'm saying? I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. Back in the day, if you was a truck driver, you was the man. Now, you say you're a truck driver, and people look at you like, oh. Uh, they look at you like you're retarded or stupid or dumb. They look at us like, like we stupid. Oh, on day you do sit behind the wheel. You know, even though when you go to the dispatch office or whatever, they don't, you know, they don't have a knowledge of what a truck is like. Mm-hmm. Because all they do is dispatch. They have the place you go to, they think, you know, well, you're late. You know, why you think I'm late? You know, they want to, they want to, you know, find you for that. For being late. Mm. That's crazy. That's- you know, all, all this stuff is crazy. You know, everybody trying to make money but the truck driver. Mm-hmm. Everybody got their hand in something, but half of the time the race can't go up. You know, everything else going up, but the race ain't going up. But the race only go up, it depends on how many trucks is in that state. If they got low trucks in that state, then the rate will break me up. But if they got more trucks in that state, that you picking up from, the race would be low. A lot of people don't know that. Mm. Did you know that? I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Why you think the race is so, so low in block when it's a produce season? But they have a lot of trucks down there looking for freight. And when they have a lot of trucks in it, in let's say they got 100 trucks down there in the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. But they only got three loads. Mm-hmm. They only got three loads. So they got more trucks for for loads. Now, if they got more freight and less trucks, the race would be up high. Mm-hmm. The race would be up high. I use a haul produce all the time coming up out of, out of Florida. You know, I use a haul for uh, a broken car pattern. You know, I do box rates. You know, haul, you know, LTL box rates. A lot of people don't know what Box rates mean box rates mean you get paid by the pilot. So sometimes you might get two fifty per pilot to go to Boston. Two fifty to three hundred per pilot when you have LTL load. Sometimes coming up by a flood you might make six thousand dollars going up to Boston. You might make seven thousand going up to Boston. Sometimes you might the, the minimum the minimum will be forty eight hundred dollars to go up to Boston. Mm. But if you don't know the if you don't know how to get your rate, then you be SOL. You got to got to know what you're doing out here in the truck estate. Man. Dennis. You like driving trucks? Oh, yeah. I'm good with it. <laughs> right. I, I, I am good with it, sir. I, I am good with it, man. Yeah. Just sitting just sitting here listening to, you know, listening to you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying myself for real, for real. You know, okay. I, and, okay. you know, and my listeners is, you know, learning a little bit, you know, learning a little bit more about you. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. But on a for real shit, bro. Mm-hmm. Hey, like like I said, man, I I 
I, I, I respect you. I appreciate what are you done out here. You know, again, you. I, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad that you was able to, uh, you know, able to survive your encounter. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. So, mm -hmm. ah, shit. <laughs> like I said, Look, man. I, all I, I do every day, I, I have a praying wife. Mm -hmm. I love her for that. I got me, a, I got me a wonderful praying wife. You know, long as my wife sit there and pray for me every day, I know I'm gonna be okay. Yes, you know, sir. my mother pray for me. My, you know. You know, I'm a good person, you know, and I got a good family. So, you know, and my my wife is in the ministry, so she prays for me every day, you know. And as long as you get out here and pray, you have to pray when you're in the truck and say, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to pray before you leave your home. When you get to your step, you got to get on your knees and pray to the, to the Lord and say, thank you, I made it to the stop here. You know, yes, and that's the main focus you have to do, be with, is you have to pray this trucking thing. You know, you have to believe in God. If you don't believe in God, you, you're not going to make it out here in this lifetime. You just ain't. You won't make it. You know, with all the stuff you did with out here driving trucks and with the, with the four-wheelers and stuff, you got to be safe. You know, and your main focus is to get home, back home to your family. Don't you believe that? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's the main thing. You go out here, you do what you have to do, and your main alternative is to get back home to your family. Safe. Safe. That's, that's the whole key, to be safe. And that's what I try to do, you know? Because I don't sleep at the trust stop. Before I sleep at a truck stop, I'll pull off the ramp and get on the side of the ramp on the other side and, and go to sleep. That's where, that where I do most, most of my sleep at. I don't even pull in the rest of it. Most of my sleep is on the side of the ramp because I'm by myself. You understand what I'm saying? Understood. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, I don't sleep in the truck stop, which, which, which I wasn't a big fan of the truck stop anyway, you know? I don't even have a TV in my truck. I don't even listen to radio in my truck. Most of the time I listen, to, I, I listen to my motor. You know, that that's the way I drive. I, I drive a co complete silent, listen to my motor. Because you got the music up so high, you don't know anything going on with the motor. You know, people blast their radio while they drive a truck, but they wonder how the heck they blow their motor because you can't hear it because you got the radio up too loud. If I hear something going on with my truck, I pull over, stop, check it out. I'll be safe. I'll be okay. Shoot. Well, Dennis Brown, man. man I, I, <laughs> I, 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 you're talking to you. Uh, man, I, the pleasure is all mine, bro. I am, I am definitely yes. glad that you're here. Definitely glad that you came on the show to share your, uh, you know, share your experience, man. Uh, definitely, I appreciate the time because you know you're a busy guy and everything. And I hope yep. I, I hope everything works out for you. You know, as far as your lawsuit goes, and I hope you know yep. you know. Hopefully, once that getting get taken care of, you know, definitely come back on and uh, and, and let will. us and let us know uh, let us know how you know how how it turned out. Okay, I definitely will do that. You know. All right, brother, you, man. You'll be the first one to know. You'll hey, be the first one to know. Trust me. Hey, I, Trust and believe. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, man. All right, man. Until Thank next you. time, man, you stay safe out there. Thank you. You too. And everybody out here in the trucker world, y'all have a blessed one. All right. Now, you be easy, bro. Thank you. Peace.